Well, good morning, friends. Today we're going to embark on a very special project. We're going to dig out my grandma's Wardian case that has been collecting dust for probably the last 13 years, and we're gonna give it a complete restoration. The glass needs attention, the whole thing needs painted, and then of course, we'll plant it up. So my grandma didn't use to use this Wardian case inside her house. Instead, she used it to take to flower shows. So she would do a display, then sometimes she will put that display in the Wardian case. So basically it's always lived in a garage. So it's really not in good condition. So let's, what was that? So let's cross our fingers that we can bring it back to life. Rocky is about to investigate what just fell down over there or what in the world is going on. Oh, my bench just fell over. So let me just show you what it looks like now and then we'll tackle this project together. So here's a look at the Wardian case. I've cleaned it up as best I can. I removed all the glass. One panel of glass was broken and I had to dispose of it. The glass on this is so incredibly delicate. I'm almost frightened to put it back in. The whole thing is a little bit warped, so it fits together, but it's not really a closed terrarium. So maybe what we'll do is actually create the look of a terrarium, but not actually plant in there. We'll kind of see how that goes once we get to it. But what I want to get around to today is just spray painting it with Rust-Oleum. So I cleaned it as best I could, but you can probably see it's really rusty everywhere, paint missing. So. Let's just get right to work on this thing. So this particular Wardian case is a stand-up Wardian case. I suppose it's about maybe four feet tall when it's all put together, but we're gonna spray paint it now with aged copper Rust-Oleum. I started out with just two coats and then I ran out of spray paint, so I had to go to Lowe's for some more. This is the first time that I had ever used spray paint Rust-Oleum and it did take me a while to get the hang of it. I think I was spraying a little too close to the metal at first because I was getting a little dripping, but thankfully I got the hang of it as time went on. So I acquired this Wardian case because after my grandfather's passing, my family was getting ready to sell my grandparents' house. And we all got together and we got two sticky notes each and we were allowed to walk around the house and put our sticky notes on anything that was of sentimental value for us. Now I've told you before that this was that same day when I was desperately searching for my grandma's master gardener tag, master gardener certificate, her floral judging tag, basically anything that had to do with being a master gardener or a judge I was in search of. And as I've told you before, I came up short on that particular occasion. But what I did mark was this Wardian case that was in one of the garages. And I also marked the address number plate that I think maybe was hanging on their mailbox. So at this point we have a good coating of that aged copper, but you can see it really looks more like gold than kind of an old world rusty look is what I was going for. So I decided to stop spraying with this color. I had it back to Lowe's and picked up a new color. And this color was called Burnished Amber. And I'm really glad I switched to this color because it was just looking a little bit too shiny with that aged copper, but bringing in this Burnished Amber and I purposefully tried to hold the spray a little bit farther away and do it kind of willy nilly here to really try to get the appearance of just pure rust as if this Wardian case had been sitting outside for 30 to 40, even 50 years. Well, it's two days later and I have the Wardian case all painted. It ended up taking a total of two days to paint this pretty much nonstop on a rotating system. So I did two coats of the aged copper and then I came in and I tried to hold the can a little bit farther away and I did two coats of what they were calling varnished amber. I hope I'm saying that correctly. But what I wanted to get was kind of a layered feel to it. Just try to make it look like it was really a old rusted Wardian case and get rid of all that ivory that was on the case. So now let's decide where we wanna place the case and get it all planted up. And I have no idea where Grace got this piece of ribbon from. Grace, is that from the Christmas tree? <laughs> Guess what guys, we do have one amaryllis in bloom. Yeah, 
So my original thought was to put the wardian case right next to this Christmas tree, but since Grace often runs right through here, sometimes she shifts this carpet and I'm really afraid that she might end up hurting herself or someone else if she brings that wardian case down while she's running through. So I decided to move the piece of furniture that's in between these two armchairs. You see, I moved the tea server over there. <laughs> There's Grace. She's like, why aren't we playing with my new birthday toy? Grace just turned uh, four on December 1st. But either it could go there or it could go over between those chairs, but I feel like the safest spot is over there, so let's go with that. And let me show you the plants that I picked up for the Wardian case. And also I've been cleaning up the glass yet again. This glass has kind of a blue-green tint to it. And I am telling you, I am so afraid of this glass. Maybe if it looks beautiful with the glass in, one day further down the line, I can have new glass panels made that are a little bit safer. I almost feel like if I look at these panels wrong, they're gonna fall apart. But let me show you these gorgeous plants. The ferns and the begonia I picked up from the local nursery. But if you guys have a giant grocery store near you, sometimes they sell these beautiful miniature moth orchids for a really inexpensive price. I paid, um, I think $20 for this moth orchid. Then I have a button fern here. This one is a East Indian holly fern. We have a palm and we have the Rex begonia. I definitely wanna include Rex begonia in there. We might have to eliminate one of the ferns that might be too much. Then we also have some sheet moss that I just had laying around the house. Here's a look at those panels. So I only have one of these triangular panels, the other one broke, and I only have some of the screws. <laughs> so I think all that's left to do is put the Wardian case back together, get the glass panels in without breaking anymore, plant up these plants. Oh, and the reason why I'm not planting them terrarium style is because the Wardian case is very warped, the glass doesn't touch each other. If I were to put soil directly in this particular Wardian case, the soil would just come out the sides. So I'm gonna kinda do just placing the plants in the Wardian case and covering it with moss, giving the look of a terrarium without actually planting up a physical terrarium. So let's just do it and see how it turns out. So for the sake of lighting purposes, I'm gonna put it together here and then we'll move it. It's just a little bit too dark over there. So there's a piece on the bottom here where I'm guessing you could either put some other plants. What I'm gonna do is put some of my grandma's gardening books down here. Oh gosh. Okay, I think that's wrong. Let's try it this way. Phew. I think this one goes in here like this. I'm so nervous, I feel like I'm holding my breath. This is the panel that gave me the most trouble getting it out. I think this area must be the most warped. So let's try to place these plants in here and disguise their pots and see how that works. My thought is for the Rex begonia to be the star. Even though we do have an orchid, I kind of want this Rex begonia to be front and center rather than the orchid. We can even prop these things up on maybe a book or some wood if we need to. I love when orchids aren't standing up stick straight but kind of allowed to lay down left to their own devices. I feel like they're so exquisitely beautiful. So that's a good start. Let's just try to cover up the pots now with some moss and some sheet moss that I have around the house. And we can maybe even use some logs in here to get some more texture. I have some bark chips here that you would use to repot an orchid. I think I'll stick some of these down here in the base just for some interesting texture.
Let's try to add in some more brown mosses. Now we have the moment of truth. Can we get the lid back on? And can we get it on without breaking? Well, that was so much fun. I can really see how people get really into terrariums. It felt like creating kind of a living piece of art. I think it's a little bit hard to see in the screen, so let me get in closer and give you a little tour. So I hope you can see this okay, friends. It's kind of hard to shoot inside with the indoor lighting and also we have glass involved, but I'll try my best. But so we basically just have moss and pine bark on the bottom. Then we have those two different kinds of ferns. We have the beautiful moth orchid in there, the Rex begonia, and then the palm. So let's get out my grandma's books and get this all put back together in its permanent location. So I have a few different books that used to belong to her. Hydrangeas for American Gardens, Landscaping with Nature. And I really like this book. I'm guessing it's out of print now. It's called Simply Flowers. So there we have it, friends, the restoration of what might have been a 1960s Wardian case. I wish I knew the date on it. I think I'll go ahead and play with the placement after the holiday season. This might not be the best place for it overall, but it will be safe here from Grace getting the zoomies. And it's a nice touch here to have in the living room just to add some more life into this area. Well, I think that brings us to the end of this Wardian case restoration, and I can't believe it took me all those years to pull this out of the basement, clean it up, finally be willing to tackle the glass, and really bring it back to life so that it can have a whole new generation of family members to enjoy it. And I think it'll be really fun to just change out the display. I plan to always just place potted plants in the display so we can change it up. You know, maybe next year for Christmas, I can grow maybe some miniature amaryllis, something shorter, and we can put those in there. But I wanna thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Definitely, if you're interested in Wardian cases, my favorite part of this whole project was reading that book, The Wardian Case by Luke Keough, I think is his name. I'll put a link to that in the description below. I'm about three fourths of the way through that book. So wonderful, I'm learning so much from him and just the history of how the Wardian case was discovered and how it was used to really change the course of history was fascinating. It was really the icing on the cake for this fun project. So Grace and I wanna wish you a wonderful day out there in your gardens and a merry, merry Christmas season. Bye.